Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In today's episode, we continue training and mentoring the Manchester University Wasp Survey Team as they remove a large bald-faced hornet's nest from the eaves of a house. They collect the active live wasp specimens for venom immunotherapy, or VIT, and then relocate the brood comb into captivity where the pupa can complete their metamorphosis into adult wasps so they can be collected for VIT. The wasp survey team did a great job and this removal went very smoothly. Let's go back to August 11th, 2023 and we'll show you the entire process from the nest removal to the capture of the live wasp specimens to the field dissection of the nest to the brood comb relocation and how the collected wasps are frozen in dry ice to preserve their venom for VIT. Thanks for riding along with us today. Enjoy the show. Um, with the length of time we're gonna have to be doing it, if we can get it set up so it's on the ground, that'd probably be better. But if we need to do it. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see how we can rig a pole next to that. Let's turn it on, please, about halfway. So if you were sad, we're going to start sucking these guys up by hand over the bridge just to help some of these where the initial ones come Yeah, we can go with this as well. Yeah, might as well try hitting with both. Let's reduce some of these guys when they're coming out now. So try not to damage the paper on the nest. Don't cover the hole, but the adjacent to it. So they just kind of hit it while they're coming and going. Make sure our suction's good enough and we can actually crawl out. So if anybody sees a visual of them crawling back out of the container, then turn up the pressure. See how fast they are to get into this container for us? Mm -hmm. They look like long to reduce. So yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna go ahead and take over my pulse that I saw here and I'm gonna start getting some new view. If your tape looks solid, you can roll that up and show the side. Yeah. You are in the perfect position, thank you God. Yeah, keep both of them right up next to the hole so we're not letting any get out if we can help it without getting hit. Because we want to catch them as soon as they take flight when they leave and when they're attempting to land. Hey, can we get more vacuum on the uh, bee? Now, you guys who have done these before, you notice the process is the same as anything we've ever done. It's bigger, it looks meaner, but exact same process and you see how they immediately get collected. I'm starting to take head hits, so just get ready because what they're going to do is go very fast. Were they spraying? Yeah, I saw it good. Great. Yeah. Okay. I can't really tell from my angle. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I'm glad you guys can make it a little bit earlier in the day because that'll help us get more of these rounded up while they're still kind of uh, at the nest site before they really get foraging all day. Okay, let's go ahead and bring it just so we'll get it. We'll get it back closer. Yeah, Andrew, just stay right on that hall and let her get rid. Okay, we're going to have to do this at a weird angle. 
No problem. Can you drop it down for a second so we get a look at that container? Get back to me. Thanks. Right there's good. Yeah, it's a good collection. Let's collect some more. If it gets about maybe two, three times that many, I'm going to dispatch and go freeze these guys in the container, okay? All right. All right, go for it. All right, Cora. I'm going to try to rip this up. How you doing, Trey? You good? Pretty good. Andrew, how you doing? Doing pretty good. All right, Colleen, how you feeling? I'm good. All right, Cora, you good? Yep. All right. Okay. How full is my bottle looking? Not very. Okay. Yours is looking pretty full. Yeah. What do you say about it? Yeah, I twice, think... Twice on the out. Okay. Just because we're local, Andrew, I can zip them back very quickly. You can pull the bottom of the ladder out to help you adjust a little bit. You slide the ladder over a little as you need to. Someone, uh, you pull it back to a little bit. Just a little bit. Just like this. Um, I, I want it to be like right here. But I would say you can I don't know if there's any good way. If you have like two, like there it is. Two more models. There it is. As long as you're in the relatively too much of the world, we'll get most of them. The closer the better, but not the blocking the world. Yeah. 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 And eventually they'll get smart enough to kind of hesitate a little bit. Yeah. And then it'll get easier to do that. Yeah. 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 Put a lid on this first. Left cap, there's a pocket cap, there's a tank. Okay. Hey, what's that happen? Very nice, you got that spare, that's perfect. I'll take the spare, Ooh. you leave it with the bottles over there. All right, why don't you give them a little piece of tape and cap them off. You can take them off, there you go. Just enough to... Yeah. Get it pretty tight. I guess you don't play with this if I was trying to do the host of that. Now, Cora, for your benefit, uh, you'll notice that even though there's a threat around the hole, they're instinctually driven to keep going back to the nest hole. So, as long as you're anywhere around that nest hole within a certain distance of the entry, they will eventually hit your collection deck. Okay. Okay, so it's okay to wait for that to happen. You don't necessarily have to chase them around trying to climb through the air. They tend to be a waste of energy okay. and batteries. So just kind of stay near the yeah, hole in one way. Yeah, they're not very really far away. I'd like to just take them and stay there. Yep. And you're going to adjust it. Okay, you want to like pop it out with the bucket? Yeah, I think just kind of get a little closer without having to retake. Colleen, you might want to just protect it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to get tired. Yeah. Woo! Let me get back up. Thank you.
Find a good spot. I can't really see. Yeah, that's great. Right right that's lovely. Yeah, 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 you guys are doing great. Awesome collection so far, no problems. You, you do see the swarm of oh, yeah. individuals coming out to hit those. I mean, they can much tough work. So, Corey, any time you feel like you're not doing the same, you have a quick advisor up that down, and then a piece of advisor off of your face. Okay. Anytime you need that, you can do it. Whenever you need a break, I got you too. I think I'll be good for a while. I'm propped up against the wall, so. Okay, cool. Thanks. Minimizing energy use. It's key when you're doing overhead work, coordinating up tool wise, that it's absolutely exhausting. No matter what type of work, painting or working on construction or just doing any project, the less energy you're putting on that, the better. So, Corey, at some point we'll see a, a reduction of the foragers to the point where most of them are hanging out tiny in the nest. Yeah. Once that occurs, we're going to collect the bottles, I'll go freeze them, and then we'll open up the nest and we'll go in after whatever's left. Okay. Okay. Whenever this bottle gets full enough and we switch it out, I think we should extend this okay, so we can cool. set it on the ground and that sounds good. We have some tools that might work that way, so I think there might be enough extension for that. I like the idea. And just be ready for that battery to just suddenly cut off. If it does, just drop it to the ground and cover it. And then send it to take it off or right. tap it off. I think I like the, the look of this swarm enough that I think we can pull the blue back container and I'll run that back to the dry ice. Right. And you guys can stand by and collect more while I'm gone. And once I get back, it'll take a few minutes, we'll be into that mess and see what's left inside. Sound good? Yeah. Alright, let's do that. Uh, you know, go ahead and the what you don't want for is you don't want to damage them. The specimens are very delicate. So if they're good for DIT, then the real therapy, the bio lab has to have a very high quality venom. And if you damage them and injure them, that venom is going to be way to So you want them in great shape. And I'll kill people with intentions with another one of these Nope, they won't. Let's see what happens here. The pressure keeps them in, and then we'll stop the pressure. That's what I'm doing. You knock it off now. You can see the weird, it won't shut off. It's easy. All right, let's go ahead and disengage, and then I'll take that back in the shop. And you probably just want to get your gloves off for that. That would still maybe step back to that. Oh, now we're going to see you go down there a little bit away. All right, looking good. I think we're going to need a new bat. You want to pull a new bat out of the truck underneath the uh, white thing on the truck passenger seat. Grab a black to see the battery. All right, thanks. You guys can hear it getting low. Get ready to tap off. All right. Glad to get the uh, bottle cap to Cora, get ready to cap this one. All right, let's tap off real quick. We can still get a little pressure and keep up there now. Oh, that's where it's coming out. Here, can you take it? Yeah. Okay. Alright, Trey, you ready? Yeah. Put that one in the floor of the truck so we know it's a dead bat. 
There's Cora, it's August 11th, 2023. She's got a really good collection of specimens for ball-faced hornet. These are Delico Vestula maculata, the beneficial native insect here in Indiana. We're gonna take these back for BIT and freeze them in dry ice. Thank you, well done. All right, August 11th, 2023. This is the first round of foragers collected by the Manchester University WASP survey team this morning out at one of the residence addresses in the community. We're gonna go ahead and freeze these for VIT so we can preserve the venom. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to put it into a dry ice cooler. We're gonna remove all of this material, which is just for insulation. We're gonna take one of the bottles. We're gonna put it directly into the ice. And then we're going to cover it with more ice. And notice I don't touch the ice with my hands, only with the bottle that I use as a scoop. You never want to touch dry ice if you can help it. Yeah, great job, Cora. Just keep it right there. Looks beautiful. There's another nice collection of foragers in there already. I'm going to step up on you, so just don't move. Yeah, it looks fantastic. What a great collection we got on this one, guys. Good work. How are you feeling? Pretty good. You good? Yeah. You guys good? Yeah? All right. Trey, how are you doing? All right, cool. Oh, and Andrew, we're doing some slicing. And try to slice one layer at a time. There'll be multiple layers of uh, paper. Mm -hmm. And most of your comb structures are going to be about a pancake in size, you know? So yeah. you can expect that. And if you see them land on your glove or something, just shake them off. Okay. Appreciate that, Colleen. This is awesome, Andrew. Here they go. Yeah, keep slicing, get all the way down to the comb, so then we can start peeling back the paper. I'm in your way there. No, you're great right there. Okay. Well, if you don't want you to move, Andrew. You're doing great. Yeah. I'm just going to back down for a second. All right, I'm just going to...
How are your arms doing, Corey? You okay? Great. Just cut as much as you need to to expose our comb inside. It'll be pretty deep inside. They've got a lot of real thick paper there. Try to keep as large a sheet as possible. Trying not to get any debris into the container there, guys. So do your best. If there's a lot of debris falling down, just pull away for a second. A lot in there? Yeah. Look at that. Look at all this. Oh, beautiful. Hey, Trey, pull back just a sec so I can get some of that on film. You've got a good comb looking structure up there. How many layers of comb do you think you got? Can you see yet? I say four. Great, that sounds awesome. So let's go ahead and remove as much external paper as you can, keeping okay. it as intact as you can. Whew. What we're gonna do is just expose all the comb and let the comb just hang there so we can see it all. Okay. Great job, use the scraper as needed. Okay, yeah, And the tongs as needed. There you go. Oh, that's some big comb. That's beautiful. What an awesome nest. You know, you hate to take these down because if you can imagine how many pest insects in the environment this one nest oh, would take oh, out. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think there's four. Fantastic. Looks beautiful. Good job, guys. So if they land on your gloves, just shake them off. If you see them land on anybody else, brush them off. You know, just try to maintain each other. Good job, Corey. You're still getting them right down the tube, so keep it up. Wherever you see them on the nest, just kind of suck them right off the nest, trying not to damage the comb or the cool. pupa. Are you taking a lot of spray, Andrew? No, not yet. All right, if anybody needs goggles, we've got them. Trey, take a look. I'm sorry, Colleen, take a look at your container. See how much you have in there. Not hardly any. Okay, then if you want to stand by, you can. You can cap off and just stand by till we get this thing dealt with. No, it's fine. Yeah, if you're getting any, that's I'm fine. fine. Okay, if you're feeling comfortable, then you're good. I got a cap in my left pocket if you need it, Colleen. All right, I I'm good. All right. And more are going to start coming out here. All right, you want to step back, Andrew? Let's take a look at this visually with the cam for a little bit. Come on down. Okay. You guys stay right where you are with the collections. And I'm going to go ahead and see how this looks up close. Yeah, that looks beautiful. That's a fantastic nest. Glad you guys got to catch this one before the end of the season. Getting a good slow look at all the larva and the pupa while it's in situ before we mess with it too much. Yep. How long does a silk cap take to? A couple weeks. Yep. That looks great. Okay, I'm going to go up the door. Yeah. Now, notice how they calm down when they realize there's nothing they can do. And they just stand by and they maintain their nest. You see how these are all just camping out? And they're taking care of the larva. Some of them are even trying to rebuild the paper on the nest. They just go about their business. Oh, I can see them moving in there. 
Yeah, the larvae are very active. The reason they move so much is they're like baby birds. They're trying to get attention so that they'll be fed. And if they're fed, they get more protein and they can grow faster and pupate faster. All right, that's pretty good. Last day with us. Yep. Wish you guys were gonna be around longer. But you're always welcome to come back. Yeah, looking good. Now we're starting to see the whole structure. That's what we're trying to do, is document the whole yeah, thing. That's fantastic. So I have a plastic scrub brush. Once we remove the layers of root comb and the whole nest is down, we're going to take that plastic scrub brush and a little soap and water spray bottle I have and we'll okay. the, clean, it clean it up a little bit and then we'll spray it with a essential oil spray to prevent a reinfestation there. Yeah. I'm excited to see what it looks like when we yeah. uh, well, we put the tub down. up there and we can just scrape off the top and probably drop it in there. Getting them? Yeah. Nice. Open them all. Try not to pull any larvae out okay. and uh, just make sure you're getting only the adults. It's and you can help kind of knock them out of the way and the tool can kind of direct them out of the way as well. You can use the tongs to kind of move them where you want them. That's okay, they'll land again and you'll get them. We'll just try to get as many as we can before we pull the brood comb. Yep. Yep. All right, August 11th, 2023, we have a bald-faced hornet nest. Trey is still up there getting imagery, and the rest of us are down here. We've collected now four bottles of very active foragers. Very well done, guys. This was a killer nest to grab, and literally could have been a killer nest for the clients. So I'm very happy you were here to take care of it. Good work.
job, sir. Let's get that guy. Come here, Junior. Yeah, they're, they're getting ready to run for the hills. All right, I think we're just about ready to start pulling this comb. Let's go ahead and get the comb containers. Let's have the back guys come over pretty close. You get right up under there and they'll stand right behind you. So Cora, step right up close so your bin is right there and they'll walk right behind you. Okay, I've got a pretty good view from here. Okay, okay. So be real gentle. Try not to separate the comb if you can, but if you have to, no big deal. You can help direct the vac to tray if you need to, clear as you go. Set that right down. Excellent. See if you can flip it over so the bottom of the oh, nest is on the bottom. That way we can view it better while we separate. I think there might be three. That could be. It's a little hard to tell with bald face because so many of them are the same size. Nope, you just set it right down on the ground and from there we can back up anybody who's flying around. Yeah, I don't have much to move with that. Yeah, let's grab the Makita. If we have it, if not, then we'll just set it, catch it as we can. Are there tongs anywhere nearby? Yes, let's get some tongs to him. I'm not sure I need to it up. Okay, great. Thank you. Fantastic. That's beautiful. Here, let's get out here so you can reach him. There you go. Maybe turn up your pressure just a little bit. Um, make it a little easier for you. Just have a little more pressure if you're not quite getting them up. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, help me out there, Andrew, whatever you do. Pretty soon we're going to do a little dissection of these layers, and that's when we'll be able to catch quite a few more. They look pretty good. Okay, I think for now, we've got about as many as feel like running out of there. Let's see who's coming back to roost. Anybody yet? A few of them will end up coming up there. You got a dead battery on the, on the Makita? Okay, let's cap her off. I think that's a new one. You got anybody in there? No, nah. okay. Just point it, point that down, and I'll try to bring the wasp to you. There you go. Well, that's a massive. Yeah, look at that. I try to get good visual on each layer as we expose it. Let me see what you got there, Andrew. Got a busted one? Yeah. Let's just leave it there. Right. It's kind of Popped fast. open. Yep. That's, there's kind of a waste sack that they have inside their body. They don't exit any of their waste until they pupate. Mm. That's usually what that is. Right, come on. No, I wasn't talking to you. All right, That's so fun. let's do the next layer. Let's set this one okay. down right here. And then do the same thing. You 
see oh, how there, thick, there's a bunch in there. You see how thick and heavy that layer is between the both of the columns. You see maybe multiple Could columns. Can we get the shot back? Would that do, give us more suction? Yeah, it would, but it's maybe not worth it at this point. I'm not sure how many are left no, in there. There's there's a decent amount in all these. Yeah, okay. We can try it. Pretty weak. Okay, no problem. Why don't you set it down and put the lid on it for a second? Let's flip her over. Put the lid on it and get some imagery of these guys. Here we have one coming out of pupation right now. There's plenty of very active larvae in this nest. They're very full of activity and motion because they're trying to attract attention to get fed. Okay, so let's have somebody separate that next layer and we'll catch them as they come out. All right, we'll have Andrew hold up the box then while she separates oh, I'm doing it. Yeah, you oh, okay. it. Yep, there you go. How do I do it? You just gently separate. Support this with your Take it hand. sideways, okay. and you'll see the support system inside it. Um, like pedestals. Okay. Right? So cut those pedestals one at a time until you get access to the whole layer. And as the little guys are in there, try to suck them out. They'll come out a little bit at a time as you do this. Try not to damage too much of the pupa while you're cutting okay. through. If you need help with that, let us know. Oops. I'll step right in there, Trey. And you can pull it apart with your hands if it's easier. Whatever actually works is fine. Nice. Air grab, nice. Trey, check the bottle and see if we're splattering them with this pressure. If they are, we can vent it more. They look to be alive to me. Okay. So Trey, you made contact, made them aware of the ground nest, right? Yep. Okay, great. I'm going to be coming back at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Excellent. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to shoot over your shoulder Sorry. here. Sorry, my problem. I'll put it over here. Uh, still pretty well stuck. See how tough that material is? It's just like cardboard really really solid it's all done with wood fiber and the saliva and the fluids from the wasps there's one on this good how's it looking down here they're looking alive are they getting splattered no Okay, good. They're just kind of all bundled up right here, but they're still moving. Alright, as long as they're not getting killed. Okay. You want to go and grab that one first? Thanks, think because we're grabbing all our new like half ones, man. That doesn't look to Yeah. The newly hatched larva or pupa, they don't really have the strength to sting or fly yet. Great. Flip that over, please, Cora. Let's see what's on the back. Anybody home there? Okay. All right. Trey, put that in the other one, will you, real quick? Once we get clear of adults, I'd like to just move yeah, them on the way. Oh, yeah. Put, these put that in the what? There's a brand new baby pupa coming out as an adult. James. 
I'm sorry, yeah, put the uh, this one into one of the small containers, wherever that ended up, just to separate it. There you go. Just kind of drop them in here. Once you have layers that are clear of adults, just sort of set them in there gently. How's it looking? Good. Okay. Over. You might not be able to get them out without squeezers. Okay. There you go. The kennel assessment got all the adults in the kennel out. There is. Literally pulling them out. Of yeah, there might be some of these notes. Yeah, break in through some here. of that paper and see There's what you can There's a lot, like right under. A lot of them kind of hide right in those nooks and crannies. Maybe just expose one piece at a time. Yeah. Is this probably deeper? Oh my nice. God. Oh, hey, look at that. Need the pruners to cut through paper? I don't think so. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's somebody home. Right there. Come on. Try not to get too much of the debris in there, just the specimens if you can. I know it's tough when there's a lot of small parts in there. I think we're keeping it pretty minimal. Maybe walking that one is more of a Two for one. <laughs> work. It's on. And then bend the left. I think that's everybody. I think so too. We should just wait there. I don't think there's any good. a little bit. Yeah, probably has. All right, you got a bunch of pupa there that we can raise in captivity now and collect when they come out. It's going to be great. It is. A lot of bunch of pupa there, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. All right, let's go ahead and close up the bins. We'll put them all back in there and we'll close that one up. If you were just getting hit by stinging your skin, they would keep hitting you over and over again and keep pulling their stinger out. They don't have a barbed stinger. Like a bee has a barbed stinger, they hit you once and they're stuck, they pull their whole venom sack out and leave and they die after one sting, because it's barbed. These guys have no barb, so the only reason you're seeing it stuck here is because your glove is so leathery. In your skin, they'd sting you over and over again and take off. But this is why you always stay suited up while you're loading out. Mm. What do you think? Good? Pretty cool, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. It's August 11th, 2023. We're about to take a look at the paper from a bald-faced hornet nest that the Manchester University WASP survey team removed today from the residence of a community participant in North Manchester. So this paper, there's a lot of it because it was a large nest. And what we're going to do is sort through it today, look for any extra wasps that have not been collected yet, and also look for any other life forms that might be in the nest. Sometimes there's other insects parasites, that kind of thing. So let's take a look and see what we see. I'm gonna go through each little nook and cranny on the nest that might be housing a wasp or some other form of life, an insect, what have you.
Part of an old comb, looks like maybe a paper wasp nest was caught up in the same corner where this nest was. Now if we look at the colors of this paper as we get to the larger pieces, see the different shades of paper on each stripe that goes across the paper. This is different foraged wood. It's a different source of foraged wood where the wasp would go to that piece of wood, which is ultraviolet damaged wood. Old grayed out wood is usually what they prefer. They will chew up that wood fiber, mix it with their saliva, their bodily fluids, and they will end up with a paste that they can build the entire nest with. And that paste is extremely strong when it dries. It can be very thin like paper, like a Chinese lantern or it can be very thick and heavy, like cardboard. It just depends on what part of the nest they're building. When they do the paper envelope like this, it's gonna be very thin sheets of pretty sturdy paper. So we separate these sheet layers and we look for any life forms inside. And there could be anything from a fully grown bald-faced hornet to a large wasp of a different species that showed up in the nest, or there might be a different type of spider or caterpillar or ant, you never know, all the way down to very, very tiny, almost microscopic parasitic insects, mites, and that sort of thing. It's a pretty paper, mostly grays and browns and tans and cream colors. Well, how's that for luck? Got a little four-leaf clover. I guess it's a three-leaf. Oh well. There's some pretty green colors camera can pick that up. Green stripes, brown stripes, grays and cream colors, beige and tans. It's beautiful colors, beautiful paper. Here again you can see a lot of the nice colors on this paper. A lot of beautiful colors. Greens, browns, beige, creams. And there's just layer after layer of this paper that they build for the perfect insulation. And here you see a little yellow jacket has come by from the natural environment out here because it smells all the pheromone that the wasps have left all over this paper. Sometimes they react to the alarm pheromone and they might get aggressive and attack if they feel that pheromone is there and they need to be nervous about that but normally they just sniff around and leave. So see how much of this paper is here as we peel each layer back you see all the air gap in between and that's how this nest is thermoregulated. The wasps have an amazing engineering ability to perfectly thermoregulate against heat, against cold, against the elements they do an excellent job. And you can see the layer after layer is connected in really intricate ways. Very fascinating the way they build these. You see how it is sort of scalloped in layers on the inside of the paper. And on the outside, you have vents and gaps to capture the air and regulate the temperature of the nest and allow the perfect amount of airflow in. It's just amazing the way they can construct these. There's lots of tiny little gaps in here and any of these gaps may have organisms in there that are alive. Uh, you could have spiders and egg sacs and all sorts of different things in here from different sorts of insects. So if you ever do have one of these and you find it complete, maybe at the end of a season like November. And it's tempting to take the whole nest and just hang it as a piece of natural art in one of your rooms, for example. But if you do that 
uh, just be aware that there's probably something alive growing in the nest. Any kind of microorganisms or even down into pathogens, uh, microorganisms, virus, you just don't know, mites, all kinds of things. And because of that, it's a good idea to freeze these solid in a chest freezer before you display them or dehydrate them through a heat treatment, putting it in an oven at a low temperature for a long time, that kind of thing, to make sure you kill off anything that could possibly be alive in here before you display it. Here's a live wasp right there. So let's capture that. There she goes. We'll let her go away in the environment. So any of these gaps, any of these little air gaps inside, they may have a live wasp pop out in a minute. So when you do this sort of work, just be protected, you know, some wearing gloves and full set of clothing so I don't get stung. So you see how massive this nest was. Here's an unbroken piece of this and if you compare that to my hand and arm that's quite long so this was a very large nest and i'm glad we were able to retrieve it when we did there was an elderly couple that we were helping because they had this on the side of their house and it would have been extremely dangerous for them to stumble into a situation where say they're mowing their lawn and they go underneath it and that sets off the alarm pheromone and they may have been attacked and at their elderly age they cannot simply run away um, and they may fall victim to hundreds of stings in an attack like that so this nest absolutely had to go no doubt about it but it was a large beautiful nest with a huge number of foragers and larvae and pupa and it's just a fantastic part of the natural ecosystem that would have wiped out just thousands and thousands of pest insects all summer long. Which is why you want to leave these in place and let them grow as large as they want to grow in general. But that, that's a big nest and it would have gotten a whole lot bigger over the summer had we not intervened when we did. Here you see some spider web activity and it's not unusual to find spiders living right inside the bald-faced hornet nest. This is such a great big piece of paper that I'd hate to break it up to dig out any more of the hiding wasps in there or any of the other life forms that we might find. So I'm gonna leave this one intact so we can use it as a specimen when we're doing trainings and when we're doing presentations for the community and any kind of teaching, that kind of thing. But that's a beautiful sample. Uh, very, very sweet looking specimen that we can really utilize to great effect. And take a look at the colors. So many pretty earth tones, greens and browns and creams and grays and really just gorgeous. Beautifully constructed by our native beneficial bald-faced hornets, the Delico Vespula maculata. Just beautiful. So we're gonna put this paper in a bin where we can keep the whole thing intact. Beautiful colors in there. Earth tones and greens, browns, beautiful. brighter greens. All right. 
That looks like about it for our nest paper inspection. August 11th, 2023. Here you see some of the pupating adults coming out and you also see a lot of active larva in these combs. These combs are quite large. They have a lot of pupa. So we're going to give them a chance to come out of pupation and captivity so they can be collected for venom immunotherapy, VIT. So we have one very large comb here and another very large comb on the other side. Lots of pupa, lots of active larva. Back on voiceover here for a moment. You can see in this clip one of the larvae that is currently weaving its silk cap. And this is what they do when they're about to go into the metamorphosis stage of becoming an adult wasp. They begin spinning silk over the top of their cell. And that's what this one is doing. There's a third comb, by the way. So two very large ones and a third that was not as large. And there was a fourth comb structure that did not have any activity on it, so it was removed, I believe. But these three will be quite active for pupa. And there's still eggs and developing larva in most of these cells. This would have been an extremely active nest that produced many hundreds of workers. For now, we're just going to remove the larva because as they decompose in the nest, they follow it up and they cause fly issues and parasite issues, that kind of thing. So we're going to have to remove as many as we can while the rest of them pupate. And well, this nest, they had a single comb layer produced dozens of pupating wasps that have been collected for VIT, and it's still going. It still has more to produce. August 12th, 2023. We just took this nest out of the field yesterday, midday. And here in the morning, the next morning, you can see how many pupa have already come out as adult wasps. They've chewed their way out of their silk cap. There's already a good number of them here. And they're already gathering as the eusocial species that they are. So this is why we always relocate the brood cone from these nests rather than destroy the brood cone because the population of pupa will always come out as adults as long as you give them a safe habitat to live in while they do that. There's probably quite a number more inside the habitat between the layers. They often will hide down in here between the layers. So there's a lot here already in just a few hours. So in just a few hours, I've counted over 30 of them here already. And in there to support them is water and honey so they can eat. There's also larva in the nest. We decided to leave the larva in the nest this time because the larva actually provide liquid food through trophallaxis to these adult wasps. So we'll leave the larva in, even though we can't feed the larva, they can feed the adults for a while. And some of the larva might have a chance to pupate if they weave a silk cap, so I'm not gonna pull them yet.
Once you have another collection vacuumed up, you go ahead and freeze it in the dry ice, which is in this cool right here. First we remove the insulating material. Expose the dry ice. Make room in the bottom of the cooler so there's a layer of ice on the bottom. Pack the container in and put more ice on top. Then re-lay your insulation material. Give it 10 minutes and they'll be ready to go.
So that brings this episode to a close from when we first found these bald-faced hornets in the field and collected them with the WASP survey team from Manchester University all the way through watching them pupate out and get collected for VIT as well. We hope you've enjoyed the content. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment to let us know you're there. See you next time. Have a good one.